context in which we operate. One should not think about the context in Europe or America or whatever if it will not survive in our economy. A simple example I gave about the accommodation, with the VC I just reacted to. When I'm sure when you are being employed in an American university, at least when you, you apply, the next thing you start doing is looking for accommodation. And in accommodation, I'm sure you have mortgage, you can get a mortgage to get your house or whatever. Now, in Ghana, the person is moving from one country, and I'm, I'm looking at people coming from here or, I mean, outside Ghana to come in. He's moving in with his entire family to come and live in Kumasi. What we are saying is, if the investor is really interested in such a person, what, is, what effort is the making to ensure that at least for the first few months that he's there, he has a place to live before he can start looking for that accommodation that he needs? That is what we're asking for. So that we do not go attracting people only for them to come and realize that God, they have nowhere to live. They want to go back. The university has a population of 28,000 students. The VC has just 20,000. Our faculty is just about 1,000, which means that there's a, a, a big gap that we need to fill. Now, what effort are we making as a university to fill that gap? What incentives are we giving to people to attract them to come? That is all that I'm, I'm talking about. But to say that we want to operate like the metropolitan universities, I mean, these are completely different environments. I would wish that, and I'm sorry, sir. I, 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 I would wish that I could just walk into Kumasi, for example, take a mortgage, get my own house. It took me more than 10 years to build my house. I was lucky within that period I had in this accommodation to live in. But if I was told when I was coming that, look, we cannot guarantee you accommodation, but at least there is a place for you to live for six months whilst you look for a house for yourself. And I think I'll be happy de de dealing with that. That is the all, all that I'm saying. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, what, what, what I would just want to correct something. It doesn't mean that the university does not provide support. In fact, when you look at a lot of people who are staying on university accommodation, they are people who came from outside. Those who are there and have even applied, sometimes because you are coming from outside, they try to put you somewhere. But what I'm trying to say is that we should also appreciate the environment we are in and the conditions we are trying to set for that environment. It is very, very important. It is very, very important. The provost, that's why the semi-autonomous nature of the college system is there. Because when I was going back, it was my head of department who dealt with me from A to B. Those are responsibilities that people, everybody has to take. And the overall university structure is supposed to facilitate that. That is why the estate department is there. But what I am begging is that we should appreciate, if we all say that our university is not up to something, then we don't have to bring levels that we know our universities cannot contain. Because with that, then we can never attract anybody. It's important. Uh, thank you very much. I, I, we should all be aware that uh, I know we are in North America, and we cannot transplant American issues uh, to Ghana. And we all have the habit of wanting to do that. But don't forget, in Ghana we have people from Europe, from Russia, from the Chinese are also there, and so on and so forth. So, uh, and if each and every one of them want to bring in what they are comfortable with, then the system becomes uh, chaotic. But I think what we need to do is to design a system that is conducive and make that very clear to us that when you are coming in, you have A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth. So everyone is away. I mean, if you give us one year uh, accommodation, for example, just yes, for example, on campus, and say after one year, you move out, that gives room for uh, the next lot of people. Now I'm going to open uh, to the floor before we go to the... Uh, yes, any. Thank you, Yao. Uh, two questions in the fourth, so I to go to PC. 
And uh, the first question is in regards to, I mean, I saw your presentation, it was a very good presentation. I, I know you take, you are proud of the infrastructure that we're doing and all that. Yeah, my question is with uh, the course contents, I didn't see more of that in your uh, presentation. And basically, we live in a green world right now. In the last two years, I wanted to ask this question to Professor Adalco. I never had a chance. And <laughs> I mean, the most important thing is it's almost two years now, and I still couldn't see anything that a KNUSD is taking leadership in the green revolution, especially in our course context. How are we making that into the course content that we have out there? And the second thing is we're having all this problem with transcripts. I don't see any problem that a KNUSD can outsource this to a very firm. Like, I mean, I'm happy to be in a focus group in Philadelphia and realize that the, the University of Pennsylvania employs more than 50% of the people in the city in any way. So KNUSD, can't you simply outsource the transcript into somebody we trust? Then the more we order the transcript, we generate revenue for the people to be able to run instead of trying to do all these things at a time. So, VC, that question will come to you directly. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it for Mr. Dakwa or Mr. VC? I'm not sure it's that. I'm not sure it's that. Okay. I think, I think, I think it's important. You asked you ask a, very, a very good question. Very good question. Uh, first, yeah. I think there's a clear I procedure know, for that. the review yeah. of each department's curriculum. Yeah. Uh, after a certain period of time, we ask that you review your curriculum and to make it more relevant. Uh, so far, the only place I can talk about will be building technology and architecture. Where one of your one of the one of your one uh, an alumnus who trained in California somewhere, Akono, has come. Uh, he's formed the Ghana, is it a Ghana Ghana Green Society, a building society, whatever. And what he wants now to do is for us to gradually begin incorporating some of the elements, those elements into the curriculum. So, for example, I'm supposed to serve on his committee, that committee. Now, in natural resources, for example, I believe that they will have to do that. Natural resources will have to do that. In some other areas, um, I don't know whether they can do this very well. Medicine and so on. Pharmacy, perhaps they can do that. But as we speak now, the university hasn't, so far as I know, hasn't taken any position on this. Now, if you have an opportunity to review your curriculum and you include it, I'm sure you receive some comments on it. Once it passes, you can begin teaching it. So directly, nothing from, from point of view of policy from the university. But in, indirectly, I know that individual departments are beginning to react to this. So I don't know, public studies, I'm not sure. But architecture, building technology, I'm, I'm, I'm very sure. Now, transcripts. Uh, this will go to VC. <laughs> OK, uh, let, let me quickly, before he comes, let me say something. Um, if you look at the way transcripts were prepared previously, I think there's been a shift, a total shift. This has become possible because of the way the reports or the, the exam reports are now generated. We've gone very far, we've gone, we've gone very far in trying to mechanize the system. Um, the pros of engineering will tell you this. If you go request for a transcript in engineering, I don't think they're going to tell you to go and come next week and so on and so forth. Medical school will not do that. Now, in some other departments, they have not been able to put the records in order. But there's a committee, the exam vetting committee, they go around and make sure that all the all these results have been mechanized. Once they are mechanized, the question of or the reproduction of or production of transcripts will become very easy, as it is now in engineering, medical school, pharmacy, and the other places. And then science, for science, they even developed the software for us, science and engineering. So science, engineering, the medical medical uh, school of uh, school of health sciences, no, sorry. College of Health Sciences and so on. The difficulty we've had, and I'll confess, is that we've had some difficult problems with the College of Art and Social Sciences when they were particularly when they were running the various options, French, geography, geography law, and so on and so forth. But now that is a thing of the past. So I'm hoping that with time the process will be enhanced. So you can get your you can get a shorter turnaround time for your transcript. So for the transcript, I think you can bear me out. Kofi, maybe you have to say something about it. We have two kids, two twins, who started the whole process. 
they develop a software for producing the reports for academic board, report for individual, the, the each student's file, report for the year file, report for the class file, and so on. So that process is well underway. Perhaps in publishing studies, this has not been done. But there's a clear procedure for doing this. And it's much faster than you can think of. Kofi, maybe you can come in quickly. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I, I don't know which uh, division you are talking about, but when we talk about transcripts from the College of Engineering, effectively it takes five minutes to generate it. And it goes through that process just to be sure that everything is correct. I sign transcripts every evening, a bundle of them. The problem generally has to do with the mail, where we have to mail it to them, we send it to them.